we dot product equals zero. All right, any questions on that? The only sort of weird thing, this vector is between whatever point you choose on your plane and then a generic x, y, z point. So it probably makes sense to do an example. And when we do this example, you'll see what form it looks like, or what, what the uh, actual equation turns into. If you took linear algebra, or you paid attention in pre-calculus one class, what does the equation of a plane look like? Oh, we'll all discover together. Fantastic. <laughs> So through these three points, so we got A001, B200, and C203. Negative two. We have three points. They're on the plane. So let's try to sketch out what our plane looks like. Now, I'm not going to try to actually graph these points accurately. I'm just going to draw, just put, th they're not the same. Two of these are not the same. Or these are all distinct points. So there's not two points that are uh, the same point. So we'll just go and write out these are the three points right here. So A. B, C. Now there are some choices. I could make these two vectors here. I could make the vector, I could, I'll do it in blue. See, there's lots of options. You could go and choose that, those two blue, I should probably make that a bit bigger, those two blue vectors instead. The best way to think about this is you want to make one of these points your origin point. So your other points, your, your two vectors start at the same point. So I just arbitrarily chose B to have my two vectors go out of B. I could have chosen A and then had the two vectors go out of A, or same thing with C. So I can draw the plane that these vectors are on. So if we were in linear algebra, I'd be calling this plane basically the span right here. Well, technically, it'd be the affine span, which you didn't do in linear algebra, but it's a plane that doesn't go through the origin necessarily. So how do you draw this plane? I'm just going to draw out a parallelogram parallel to the uh -oh, parallel to the two vectors that I have here already. All right, so that's the plane. And our normal vector is going to go straight up. And I could draw two right angle symbols right here to say we're orthogonal to these two vectors, and we'll give them names. We'll go with u and v. So what do I need to define a plane? We got a nice pretty picture here. Now did I talk about how if you have two vectors, the plane spanning them is just think about a sheet of paper sitting on top of your two, ve your two vectors? Okay, so that's how you want to think of a span right now, a geometrical span. I shouldn't use the word span, but I'm abusing notation or language, but it's the plane that these vectors both live on. So as long as they're not parallel, they're, gonna f they're just one plane that they both live on. So I try to draw the plane out there in blue. What is this vector that I drew that's going straight up? What do we call that vector? It will be the cross product of u and v. There's a special vocabulary name for it. It will be orthogonal to u and v. Normal. It's a good question. The normal one. <laughs> All right. So I need to get u and v and then cross product. And that will be n. So you can compute n, the normal vector. And after you get n, we'll worry about the other part right here. 
So go ahead and compute n right now. So you need to get u, you need to get v, and then cross them together. And remember, you're doing end minus start, not start minus end. And one of the ways you can tell algebraically is they both should start or originate from the same point. So if you look up on the board, which is in use now, you get the, I underline the B, because that's they're both starting at the B point. You can see that algebraically right there, because it goes uh, N minus start. So they got the same starting point. So compute these, and then get a cross product. So do we have the same normal? All right. If you went the opposite order, you might get negative. If you chose a, like if you, I made you choose B as the origin point, but if you chose C, you should still get either plus or minus this normal. I think it would even be the same. It wouldn't even be a scalar multiple. I'm pretty sure you get exactly this normal or negative this normal. So that's our N. Now, I can use any non-zero multiple of n. So there's a really nice multiple of n that I can use, which is multiplied by negative a third. And everything will be positive and all that. So let's use negative 1 third n. Which is 1, 2, 2. So now. We have our nice normal. So usually, I, I would just recommend just pick an easy multiple, never choose zero multiple. Um, and usually, you don't need to make it a unit, because you'll have divided by square roots. So that's usually going to get uglier, not better. So we're going to the uh, formula, p minus p0 dot n equals 0. So I need to label some things. So. What could I use for P0? P0 is a point, any point on the plane. So I could use B. I could also use A or C. It doesn't actually matter. So if I use A or C, just think about the normal would be going from up there or out of the other one. So it actually doesn't matter which of the points that I use. I'm going to go with, yeah, B is pretty easy. Let's just go with B. I'd say C is a little more complicated, but not by that much. So we're going to let our p0 equal b, which is 2, 0, 0. p0 
P is any point on the plane, not a specific point on the plane, but any point on the plane. So I'll go ahead. I'll call that point right there P. Now I don't really know anything about P other than it has three coordinates. It needs a certain geometric property, which we're about to write down, but it's going to be any point that'll have this property we're about to write down. So if we make this right here, that'll be P minus B. Actually, let me call it B not, P not, so it looks exactly like the one we just did, or a previous example, P not. So we called B, we also called that P not. So that's our original point on the plane. All right, so any, any questions before we keep going here? So we don't know anything about P other than it has three coordinates. So we're just going to write it as x, y, z. So our plane equation and the n I'm going to choose. I'm actually going to use this uh, our nice scalar multiple of n. So it's a little bit uh, the numbers are a little bit smaller. We're going to use that version right there. <coughs> I can use any multiple of it, so I'll just use the easiest one I could think of. All right, p minus p0. So that is x, y, z, the vector x, y, z minus the point, well, I should say the point x, y, z minus the point, we're we doing 2, 2, 2, 0, 0, dot the vector n which is 1, 2, 2. And of course that equals 0. So we'll subtract first. So we get x minus 2, comma, y minus 0, comma, z minus 0 dot 1, 2, 2. And dot product, you just multiply each one pairwise and then add that together. So dot product, there's not much going on. x minus 2 plus 2y plus 2z equals 0. And the standard form is you have x, y, z in alphabetical order and move your constant to the right side. That's the way planes are usually written. So we add two to the other side, and we get two right there. So this is our plane equation. So any algebra questions, arithmetic questions? So the individual steps are very easy, just knowing when to do them in the right order is the only thing that's tricky here. Now, if you're looking at a plane equation, you could actually see the normal vector. Can you see the normal vector? It's x, y, z coefficients. And if you saw how we got it, it makes, should make perfect sense why it's the x, y, z coefficients. Uh, the reason you can't really tell from 2 is because you're going to add those constants together, so you can't really get them back. You can sort of get them back. All right, so that is a plane equation. And we are done with this problem. Let's do a sort of analogous problem. Let's begin with this plane and pretend like we didn't know any points on it and then think about how can we get some points on the plane if we ever needed to take an equation of a plane and get some points.
So first of all, how many points are on a plane? Infinity. Infin infinity. So there's going to be a lot of correct answers I could write down. Precisely infinity correct answers I could write down. So we're just going to write down some. We don't want to spend infinite time doing this, so let's just find two of them and be done with it. So points on the plane satisfy this equation. That's what it means to be on the graph of an equation. So without doing any linear algebra at all, can you think of an XYZ combination that when you put those values in here adds up to 2? And don't go back and use one of the points we just saw. Two, negative seventy-five, and positive seventy-five. Seven Right, that works, right? Yes. Actually, I should be using point notation, not diamond bracket notation. And which one? Zero one. Zero one. Uh, you can write these points out very quickly. In fact, if you look at this top point right here, you could write out infinite ones, or a formula for infinite ones very easily. Whatever second number, negative, will be the third number. And then put two in the front. Uh, what if I told you the first coordinate had to be 12? Still infinite correct answers. So negative 6, what does that mean the last one has to be? One. I believe it needs to be 1. Is that right? 12 minus 12. Yeah. So you can basically pick, you can actually pick two coordinates and then get the third. The only time you can't do that is if the plane is parallel, or I should say orthogonal to one of the axes. That's the only time you can't pick two coordinates. And why is that? Because so if you just, this is one of the few times I'll graph in three dimensions. So let's say your plane is orthogonal to the y-axis. What, orthogonal to the y-axis. So I'll draw a little right angle. All right. So there's whatever y value that this has, every point on this plane has the same y value. In fact, I can write the equation. It'll be y equals whatever that number is. That's the equation for this plane. That may seem a little weird, but think about it. X and y. <laughs> X and y. <laughs> X and z. X and z could be anything. And then as long as y is that number c, you're on the plane. So a little more geometry in n-dimensional space. A linear equation is a basically a linear object of n minus 1 dimensions. So we're in three-dimensional space, so a linear equation is going to be a two-dimensional linear object, also known as a plane. Uh, if we're in four-dimensional space, a linear equation would be a three-dimensional, and they call it hyperplane, because they run out of words. So it's just hyperplane once you go past uh, uh, dimension 2. Uh, things get more complicated if you have a system, depending on how the objects intersect, then you can get different shapes. Well, they're always going to be a linear shape, but we're not going to go over that right now. All right, parallel planes. So let's say you have two planes. And we'll go with Oh no, battery hanging there. We can make it. So we'll go um, P minus P one dot N one and P minus P two dot N two. That'll be the two equations. All right, so you got two planes right here, two equations of uh, planes. 
Now, it may seem a little weird, P and P, it's the same letter, but remember, P is what actually holds the X, Y, Z variables. The only, uh, those are the three coordinates that a point could have on your plane, and it needs to satisfy this property right here. So how would I know if two planes are parallel? You can certainly draw a picture of two parallel planes, hopefully. It's not the best parallel drawing. How would you know if two planes, oh, here we go. So here's two planes, parallel, not parallel. Yeah, mostly, but I can't hold them that flat. <laughs> There's no such thing as flat object anyways. Only theoretically flat. All right, so what property? Does it matter what point is in the plane? Does If I move this plane up or down, left or right, does that make them parallel or not parallel? Has no effect, does it? So normal vector, think about normal vectors. What can you say about normal vectors of these two planes? They're gonna be parallel or anti-parallel, if you like that word. Let me flip it over, or depending on which way your normal points. So the normals are parallel or anti-parallel. So they're scalar multiples of each other. So that is parallel planes. So they are parallel if n1 equals alpha n2 for some scalar that's not zero. And I can actually say parallel if and only if. So if your normal vectors are not parallel, I can say your planes are not parallel. And if your planes are parallel, I can say your normals are parallel. So just to be clear, it doesn't mean your equations are multiples of each other because the constant might be off. So the constant's off means one of the planes is uh, you know, above, below, depending on your perspective or to the side of the other plane. So you just look at normals. So parallel planes are either the exactly same plane or they don't intersect at all. Those are your two possibilities for parallel planes. So two parallel planes either uh, never intersect or are the exact same plane. And if they're the exact same plane, the actual equations will be multiples of each other. So that's properties of parallel planes. Let's think about two not parallel planes. There's probably a smart word for that. I want to say askew, but I'm not sure. So two non parallel planes. How do two non-parallel planes intersect? Quick question. Uh, on the first thing, second line, what's that little symbol in front of equations? It kind of looks like a Z. Alpha um, two, the number two? Okay. There's a number two down there. This is the number two. Oh no, not, not that. that. Oh now it looks like the integers. Right in front of the word equations. Second line check up here. I can just go over there. Yeah. In a blank? <laughs> that's a period. Oh, that's an arrow. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm writing a note about if, the, if it's the same plane, the equations are multiples. Sorry. Ambiguous arrow. Is that a Greek letter? No 
No, it's not. <laughs> All right, two not parallel planes. So, not parallel. If you think about where they actually are going to intersect, this could be a line. So, two not parallels intersect in a line. Can we write the equation of a line? Yep. And what do we need for the equation of a line? A slope and a We're not allowed to say slope anymore. It's a good try. <laughs> it's a good one to default to. <laughs> Almost. Direction. So we need some. It's the analogous to a slope, but it's like where is it? Where is it pointing? What direction is it traveling in? All right, so a line equation, so we use L of t equals, what did I call the first? I called it p-naught, probably. Did I? Yep. p-naught plus vt. So your slope, oh, actually, if you want, you can write it as vt plus p-naught, that might make you feel better about lines so it looks like mx plus b p <laughs> it's almost a b if i had a bad writing notation <laughs> actually that p is almost a b by itself all right so how do you think so we can get p naught we got to satisfy both equations of the plane. Or you got two planes intersecting, so I need to satisfy both of the two e equations, which is a linear algebra problem. Good news is there's infinite correct answers, so it's a little easier than most linear algebra problems. And you can pick any one you want. So let's draw a picture of this. So I'm going to draw two planes that are definitely not parallel. a wider, shorter plane. That's pretty good. Does that picture make sense? Intersecting planes, and then the intersection is a dotted line right there. Yes. Or a three dimensional plus. All right. So I want the equation of the dotted line, the intersection between the two. So I drew it with the two points highlighted, but there's infinite points that they touch. So we can, there's infinite choices here. Let's think about the normals now. And I'll draw the normals. You can draw them emanating from any point on e the plane, but obviously we want to have them both emanate from a point that's on both planes. So I will pick that point right there, and we'll draw one normal going straight up, and that's going to be normal to our sort of horizontal plane. Our other normal, oh man, not the best artist at this part. Let's say maybe something like that. That's kind of ugly. Oh well. Is that okay? 
All right. I should have planned that out a little better. My notes are not good that I'm drawing from. So we got n1, n2, and what I need to know is v. So I'll use blue. So this blue right here, this will be our v, our direction of the line. How does v relate to the two normals? It's orthogonal. So why is it orthogonal? This vector v actually lies on both planes. It better lie on both planes. It's on the intersection of them, so that means it's in both planes. So it better be orthogonal or have a dot product of 0 with our normals. So how do we take two vectors and get a third vector that is orthogonal? There we go, cross product. So that's all we have to do to get v. So v is n1 cross n2. And of course, again, you can take any scalar multiple that's not 0. So if you get some you know, big vector, you could scale it down. If you get crazy square roots, you can sort of rationalize if you're into that. So I don't think that doing more uh, cross products is necessarily a good idea right now. But let's look at how to take two planes and intersect them and get a point easily. So I'm going to pick two non-parallel planes. So we will use We'll go x plus 2y plus 4z equals 6, and 3x minus y minus z equals 1. Parallel or not parallel planes? How do you know they're not parallel? Because... Well, what do you mean by they? We can't use pronouns. The normals. There are two normals, which are 1, 2, 4, and 3, negative 1, negative 1. So the two normals are not parallel. They're very not parallel. It doesn't take much to see they're not parallel. All right, find some. Of course, there's infinite points, so we'll just find some points in the intersection. So now you have to satisfy two equations, which is way tougher than satisfying one equation. I can satisfy one equation very easily. Probably just look at the first one, like 0, 3, 0. Boom, that's 6. Uh, but now, chances are 0, 3, 0. Well, I can see 0, 3, 0 is not going to give me 1. So that's out. So take 30 seconds and see if you can find some points here. I'll give you a hint. Fix one coordinate, and then think about how to get your other two. You can't fix two coordinates unless you're really lucky. And if you're that lucky, you probably should be playing the lotto today. So fix one coordinate, doesn't matter which one. And might as well make it easy and pick zero for that coordinate. And then go ahead and see what. Uh, so if you fix x to be zero, figure out what yz combination gives you these two right here. <coughs>
Anymore? Anybody feel good about their? Zero, negative, five, four. All right, so there's three of them. How do I know if they actually work? Plug them in. Plug them in. So we got, you know, I don't really need to care about x's because all, we all chose ones that had no x, uh, zero x value. So you can really just look at the y, z's. So we got 2y plus 4z. Um, so we got. Two, so I'm looking at the first point here, 0, 1, negative 2. So we got 2. Uh, so I think the first one f fails to be 6. Yeah. yeah, so that's out. And then second one, negative 10 plus 16 is 6. And you got to check in both equations. Negative, negative 5, so positive 5 minus 4 is 1. So that passed. And last one, 0, 3, negative 9. Hopefully that works because that one's mine. 6, oh no. Oh, it fails really bad. Jeez. What did I mess up? Oh, I know what I did. Negative 9 is y. So I just assumed the second point was, the second coordinate I got was the third coordinate. So it should be 0, negative 9, 3, hopefully. Negative 9 says 8, negative 18 plus 9. Negative 18 plus 12. Oh man. Whatever. Is a positive nine, negative three? Yeah. All right. How's the, what's the right way if you want to get all possible points? Equation. Equation. So if you do real linear algebra, <laughs> let's do this the right way. We've got about a minute and a half. Let's knock this out the way it should be done. One, two, four, six, three, negative one, negative one, one. So we're going to do some row reduction. Minus three, row one. So you got minus six, minus one, minus seven, minus 12, minus one, minus 13. Minus 18, minus 19. Oh man, it's going to be ugly. All right, which variable is free? Only two more choices. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Fix. Fixed. Free. Yeah, you were close. You would have gotten a third try. Pretty sure. <laughs> All right. So I want to cancel out that too. So I'm going to go minus. Uh, Two actually plus two sevenths row <coughs> two. And it's gonna get ugly because I just chose these arbitrarily. That better be zero. Oh goodness. 
we have 4 minus 26 sevenths. It's a lot of sevenths. It's only two sevenths. Three sevenths? It's two sevenths. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, all right, so this problem is ugly because I just picked it arbitrarily. All right, not the most eloquent example problem I've done. All right, you probably want the easy way to do it, right? Yes. Oh, there is no easy way to pick P0. All right, so what I can write, though, you can do a there's a few different ways. You, it's just a linear algebra at this point, which for some reason I'm not able to do at the moment. But I'm not teaching linear algebra, so that's not relevant. So there you go. There's your linear equation. Cross product times t plus p0. I strongly recommend whatever P0 you get, make sure it actually works. So one of our P0s worked, so we'll just go with that one. <laughs>